This particular recipe harps back to the days when I was living in Cyprus. Now it's an Easter bread, it's called Laganis. It's eaten before Easter actually. It's a bit like a flatbread, but it's covered in loads of seeds, lots of flavour, and it uses a very special spice, which I'll get to in a minute. So you start with your flour in a bowl, your salt goes to one side, and then your fast action yeast goes to the other side. If you're using fresh yeast and you can't get hold of this sort of fast action stuff, it's fine, you've just got to use a little bit more. So for every seven grams of fast action, you can use 20 of fresh, so it's normally you know, two, three to one. Um, so you've got your yeast, you've got your salt, and you've got your flour. The next thing I'm gonna add in is mastica. Now mastica is this, it doesn't smell of much in this form, but actually, when you grind it down, that's when the aniseed flavor comes out. Quite traditional in a lot of Greek and Cypriot baking. So give that a good grinding down. You can smell it now. It's quite pungent, and I like it actually. You'll, you'll know when you smell it, because it reminds you if you go to Greece or Cyprus on your holidays and you'll eat some of their kuluri or some of the village bread, you'll actually, you'll taste it and go, what is that? What am I tasting? It's mastika. You can get mechlebi in there as well, which is another one. Now I'm just stirring that together. And then I pour in my water. Start with about three quarters of it in there. Get your hands in there. Just give it a little bit of a stir. And it picks up a lot of the flour. I'm not doing anything, I'm literally just stirring with my hand. There's still a little bit of flour to pick up, add a little bit more water. Stir it again. Begin to push the dough together a little. You can see with just doing that, it's starting to form a, a rough dough ball. And you can feel how soft it is. A little bit more water. The reason is to do a recipe and use exactly the right amount of water it's very difficult. And the main reason being is because your strong flour that you're using may be different to my strong flour. A good strong flour will absorb more water. If it absorbs more water, you get more dough. If you get more dough, you get more bread. If you get more bread, then you make more money. So if you're in a bakery, you tend to go for the stronger ones because it absorbs more water. It costs a little bit more. They can be a little bit more powerful as well, but it's a good way. But always start with a good flour. It's always a good indication that your protein levels will be nice and nice and high. Typically, you know, 13% is good for making bread. Anything less than that, plain flour is good for making biscuits and cakes, that sort of thing. So, again, begin to manipulate the dough a little bit in the bowl. Needs a little bit more water, and I'm happy with that. Just picks up any of the residue, and you end up with a piece of dough all over my hands. Lovely. So I've got half of a loaf on my fingers. Got a little bit of flour. A light dusting on your hand. Give it a little bit of manipulation. Onto the bench. And you can see that this is already a, a sort of, well it is a dough. It's a dough ball already. And I haven't really done much to it. The way to, to react to this now is you can leave this in a bowl as it is, cover it up with a tea towel, come back to it half an hour later and just massage it. Just massage the dough. And that's all you're doing. And after half an hour, you do another five minutes of that. Leave it, cover it, leave it for about an hour and a half. It'll be good to use. Now, in true television and filming fashion, I have one. Now I've been using cling film on this one. This has been sitting here now for two hours actually. But have a look at that. Look inside there. It's important that you see that structure. See all the strings in there. That's what you're looking for. Okay, so you end up with a dough that looked massive in there, but actually it's that. It's the same size as I put in. So all I've done is knock all the, the carbon dioxide out of it and you end up with a, a lump of dough, which is airless again. But it needs a second proof. At this stage, you're gonna leave that dough for a second. 
Get a nice big baking tray. And all you're gonna do is add a load of seeds to there, sesame, black sesame, a few caraway in there as well, a bit of flavor from the caraway. You mix all that together. And then the secret is, get some, that's quite warm water. Put your warm water over there, pour a little bit of it in there, and then run it all over the top of the seeds. And that warm water will begin to expand the seeds and it will give out loads and loads of flavor. That's the idea of doing it by adding the seeds to it. Finish it off with the rest. Give it a good mix round. And then flatten it out with your hand, because I'll show you why now. You grab your dough. It doesn't matter about the bits in there, because it's going to be in there and on there anyway. Shape your dough roughly, shaping it into a sort of rough bloomer shape. That's just rolling it up. Flatten it down with your fingers. And again, flip it over again. Now get your fingers, if you're doing a focaccia, get your fingers right in there. And again, really push down so it's getting thinner and thinner as if you're making a, a pizza base. And again, it's quite therapeutic this actually. Get your dough, pop it in there, and push it down, doing the same thing, trying to flatten it out again. What's happened, because it's wet, all the seeds are stuck. Do the same thing underneath. You can smell the mastica and the mastica and the seeds are releasing all their flavor now because it's hot water. Prepare your tray, baking parchments, nice big tray. Place it on there and again, fingers all the way around. Now leave this to prove, pop it into a supermarket bag or put a very loose bag over the top just to stop the air getting to it and leave it to proof for about an hour and a half. We're gonna bake it, it'll be delicious. Now this has been resting now for a good hour and it's ready to bake. Now I've set it at 200 fan or 220 non-fan. It'll bake for around 30 minutes. such a strong smell in the kitchen at the moment. It comes from the mastica. Now this is a beautiful bread. It's a bit hot to eat at the moment. Leave it to cool off slightly for about an hour. It's crispy. It's beautifully soft inside. Lots of flavour. And the seeds bring out so much flavour as well. And especially blended with the mastica inside. That is a great bread. It reminds me of being back in Cyprus around Basca, Easter time. The thing is about this recipe, Leganis is a traditional Cypriot when I was living in Cyprus recipe that I got. Now, most of the recipes on my easy bakes, you'll know them, you've heard of them, but unless you're Greek or Cypriot, you've probably never heard of this one. And it will, honestly, it will fill you with delight. The flavors, the seeds, the bread itself, serve it with whatever you wish and honestly impress all your friends. Now there's lots of easy bake recipes on my YouTube channel. Click like, click subscribe, and get baking. All the recipes are there. More than anything, enjoy it.